this is Jack Stanley, and I wanted to talk about bathroom technology. You know, we don't really think about the bathroom much. It's a very important part of any household. And you know, the interesting thing about the modern bathroom, it kind of takes away some of our mammalness. It kind of puts into a room where we can take care of bodily functions, get ourselves prepared, get ourselves cleaned, in a way and in a fashion that would be totally not understood by our forebearers even 200 years ago. An interesting thing about the bathroom is if you go back in time, what bathrooms were were not much of anything. Today, it is commonplace to have a toilet. It is commonplace to have a bathtub and shower, or just a shower by itself, and a sink, and an area to dress or prepare and have a medicine shelf, etc. Well, if you go back years ago, what was a bathroom? Well, there, it was the outhouse. And before there was an outhouse, well, you know, like we take our dogs for a walk to let them do their business. Several hundred years ago, we would do the same. We'd take a walk and just do your business wherever you needed to. You didn't have some of the facilities that are commonplace today, and we really don't give it much of a thought. Now, if you go back in the history of man, you know, back in its prehistoric days, of course, we did just what dogs did. You know, they went to a certain area and did their business. They kind of kept their areas separate where they did their business and where they cooked and cleaned and slept, whatever. As time went by, if you go to the ancient Egyptians, they had set up all kinds of bathroom facilities. They had shaving facilities, they had makeup ointments, um, all kinds of bathroom materials, one might say. The Greeks were very advanced in that, but probably the Romans were the most industrious when it, uh, when it came to uh, bathroom facilities in the ancient world. They had running water. Interesting thing about Roman bathrooms were the fact that they would be set up in a town square with perhaps 20 various holes and where people could sit and do their business and converse whilst they were doing their business. Today, modesty seems to prevail, and I think it has a lot to do with how our entire world was changed by Victorian culture. But the Romans had no problem all just defecating together in one joyful lot. But, you know, the whole thing was that they had running water to clean everything, they had sewers, they had everything. And then we went into the Dark Ages, and all of that knowledge, all that great wisdom, all that great industry, all that great innovation was lost. And then we went back to being like the dogs. Things changed in the later years, in, 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 in early, in Europe, in the 15th, 16th centuries. But in the United States, we were very rudimentary when it came to bathroom facilities. You had an outhouse. Maybe you might have a two-holer, just in case. Now, of course, wintertime was not exactly an exciting time to go running out to the outhouse. So you had something called a chamber pot. And a chamber pot was what, whether you did your business in, and then it would be carried out and dumped in the morning. Not exactly a pretty job for the servants or for the individual themselves, but that's the way you did it. It's an interesting to note, uh, thing to note that during the American gathering for the Declaration of Independence, Independence Hall had a outhouse, and they had a special feature. They had a communal brush. 
just think of this, okay? That would be kept in salt water. And the brush would be used after you finished doing your business. And you would just hand the brush to everybody. Pretty nasty if you think about it, but that's what they did. A brush was a great innovation to clean yourself after using the bathroom. Something we just didn't talk about. The idea of toilet paper really hadn't caught on yet. And you'd use rags or you'd use old newspapers or in the 19th into the early 20th century, you used the Sears catalog. That used to be a popular thing, especially in outhouses. You could read a little bit and then take care of things. Hot water running into your shower. Well, that's a relatively new thing, too. You didn't have hot water. You had cold water. Or if you did take a bath in, like, the 18th, 19th century, there was a hierarchy in the way that you would take a bath. If it was a family, the oldest went first with kids. And each would jump in and take a bath. By the time you got to the youngest, you weren't quite sure if they were cleaner or dirtier. I mean... You know, you couldn't tell. At least that, that led to that saying, throwing out the baby with the bath water. You couldn't tell there was a baby in it because the water was so dirty. Because you didn't have all these... You had to heat the water on a stove and fill up the tub. People didn't bathe. It wasn't a common practice. I can tell you, reading uh, Thomas Edison's longevity survey that he filled out, he said he would bathe maybe once every two weeks or so. Uh, he felt that bathing wasn't good for the skin. And uh, he said, if you don't eat much, you don't need to bathe often, which that was his philosophy. That had always been his philosophy. And many of the people who worked with him early on and later, because later it got worse, um, could say that he smelled of things organic and non-organic. And you always kind of knew when he was around. It's a part you just don't hear about very often. Other things, you know, running water into a house. I mean, this is all relatively new things within the last 100, 150 years. And that's not that long at all. But the bathroom, taking a shower, taking a bath with nice hot water, and letting it drain. You have, you have sewers. It's wonderful. We have wonderful things today. The modern toilet which basically has its beginnings in the uh, 19th century, working as it does today, um, is a wonderful, wonderful invention. It doesn't get much credit, although it is very much liked and, of course, used by modern man. It kind of separates us from the mammals. We have our own little sanitary area to take care of whatever we need to take care of. Other things to mention. As I said, that uh, you had the outhouse, you had uh, chamber pots. Bathing was not important. Sometimes what you would do years ago, you would bathe maybe once a week. In fact, in the days of the Declaration of Independence, one has to remember that Benjamin Franklin was looked upon as kind of odd because he, uh, he would bathe once a week. And every, everybody kind of thought that was a little outrageous. Um, but he did. Most people years ago didn't bathe. What they would do is they put ointments on them to make them smell nicer, but there would still be that residual stink didn't have deodorants. You know, if I may throw this at you, think about this. 1776, July, the Continental Congress, which was the Second Continental Congress, are holed up in a room, windows closed, drapes drawn so no one could see what's going on. A whole delegation of men, most of whom who hadn't taken a bath since the since the last month. Think about that. 
It's interesting how our hygiene has changed and how important the bathroom is. So the next time you walk into your bathroom, sit there and gaze at the toilet. Gaze at the shower, the, the tub. Gaze at your sink. Turn on the water and feel that hot water. And just say thank you. <laughs> we have such wonderful stuff today. We have such wonderful technology. Now granted, a hundred years from now, our technology will be looked upon as arcane. But the fact is, we are of the moment. And what was a hundred years ago, or a hundred and fifty years ago, two hundred years ago, is frightening to us. Just think what 200 years from now they'll be looking at what we're doing. But for now, be thankful and happy about the wonderful innovations that makes your bathroom work. Because it's the, it's the wonderful, magnificent development that separates us from other mere mammals. Thank you.